Hi, I'm Matt from Black Box Mind, the channel that explores every aspect of learning. In this, the eighth episode of the mini-series on the principles of multimedia learning, we'll be looking at what the hell the modality principle is. You have two groups of students. Let's say you want to teach them about the formation of lightning. So you prepare two versions of the same short animation that explains everything. One version has the animation with narration. The other version has exactly the same animation, but with on-screen text captions instead of the narration. Just to be clear, the on-screen captions say word for word the same as the narration. You gave the first version of the animation to group one and the second animation to group two. If we did transfer tests with both groups of students, which group do you think would perform better? Group one with the animation and a spoken narration or group two having the same animation with text captions of exactly the same script instead. Well, out of the 61 times that this experiment was run, 53 times the students that had the narration performed better on transfer tests. And this is all to support what we call the modality principle, which is defined as people learn more deeply from a multimedia message when the words are spoken rather than printed. If you think about it, this actually makes quite a lot of sense. I mean, an animation is a visual element on screen that your learners will have to look at. And text is also a visual element that your learners have to look at. So you can see there's a bit of a conflict here. You can't very well look at two visual elements at exactly the same time and pay close attention to them both at the same time either. So the idea of the modality principle is that you move the text from the visual channel i.e. written text on screen, to the audio channel in the form of voiceover. This way, you free up the learner's visual channel for properly being able to watch what's happening in the animation. Now, there are certain circumstances where the modality principle is not best used, and these circumstances are when there are a lot of technical terms in what is being said, also if the narration is in the learner's second language, for obvious reasons, that can be complicated. Also, if there's a lot of verbal material being delivered. These are all boundary conditions that are outlined by Mayer in an article that I've linked in the description box down below. Whilst you're down there, why not like the video and subscribe? Shameless plug. Anyway, this is the modality principle. And this brings us to the end of the Managing Essential Processing group. In the next group, we'll be looking at fostering generative processing. So I'll see you in the next video.